Okay, given the binomial distribution, as I said, we want to determine the generating function. Well, if I think about what the distribution means, for binomial, I could have zero successes out of n trials, or one success, or two success, or all the way up to k successes, all the way up to my last n success. And the probability of having these successes, using binomial theorem, well, this is going to be n choose 0, which is 1, times p to the power 0, times q to the n. This one's going to be n choose 1, which is n, times, well, p to the 1, and there's me n minus 1, so it fails, and so on. So this will be n choose 2, p squared q to the n minus 2, and so on and so forth. Whereas the kth term will be n choose k, p to the k successes, q to the n minus k. And finally, the last one is going to be n choose n, which is 1, p to the n, q to the 0, as such. So this is my distribution for all terms with for my binomial. So if I want to find the generating function, g of t, well, what that means is I take this is the exponent on t, so it's t to the 0 times q to the n, which I know is just q to the n, plus n p q to the n minus 1 times t to the 1, plus n choose 2 p squared q to the n minus 2 t squared, and so on all the way up to the nth term, which is going to be pn to the power tn. Well, if I think about what this is, imagine that I had a polynomial of q and pt. p and t are always the same exponent. So, what I could say is I could have q plus pt, and it would give to the power of n. If I would expand out this term, I would get exactly all these terms here. And so the generating function for binomial is simply working backwards from the binomial expansion to a simpler version of it. And so here it is. Then it says, hence determine expected value and the variance. Well, if we look back in our formula booklet, expected value is the derivative of the generating function at 1. So let's do that. Let's do the derivative of this generating function. So g prime of t, the n comes down, q plus pt to the n minus 1, Chain rule says take the derivative of the inside function, which will be p. And then to find the expected value of x, well, it's going to be the derivative at 1. If I plug in 1, I get n. q, I know, is 1 minus p plus p times 1, n to the minus 1 times p. Well, 1 minus p plus p is just, all this is 1, so I end up with np. To find the variance, looking at here, I get g double prime at 1, g prime at 1, subtracting g prime 1 squared. So, I'm going to find g double prime for the variance. If I look at my derivative here, again I pull down my exponent, so it's going to be n times n minus 1, and the p, uh, q plus pt to the n minus 2. The derivative of this will be p times this p makes it p squared. To find g double prime at 1, I get n squared minus n. If I plug 1 in here, so 
1 minus p plus p to the n minus 2 times p squared. Well, that here is 1, and so I just get n squared p squared minus n p squared. Using the formula, I know it's the second derivative at 1 plus the first derivative at 1 minus the first derivative at 1 squared. So let's do all these to find the variance. So the variance of x will be n squared p squared minus np squared, the second derivative at 1. And then I go plus the first derivative at 1, which is np minus the second derivative at 1 squared, so np squared. If I expand this out, I get n squared p squared minus np squared plus np minus n squared p squared. Those cancel. If I look at this, I can pull out an np from both terms, which will leave me with a minus p plus 1. Well, this is q, so I get n, p, q as the variance. And if we look at our formula guide, I can see binomial distribution, expected value is n, p, and the variance is n, p, q. So I've just proved for you the expected value and the variance of a binomial distribution. Here are some other generalizations. Here's the probability generating function for binomial, geometric, Poisson, and a negative binomial.